welcome to the Grandland video blog for books that came out on June 24th, 2009. I'm Craig, your host. This is part three of three. We're going to talk about some indie books and then a couple of DC books. If you missed parts one or part two, you missed all of our Marvel books. There's 12 of them in the first two installments there. The first six have Dark Reign, the second six don't. Uh, check them out. There's some interesting stuff. There's some good stuff. There's some bad stuff. There's some dudes kissing dudes. What? What? That's, this is the greatest reaction zing. ever. Whoa! Zing! Oh, dudes kissing dudes. Right also, here. also cover your Republican eyes. It's Barack Obama, and he's shirtless. What? Whoa! Barack the Barbarian number one comes out from Devil's Due Productions here, and uh, it's all new action written by extremely leftist Larry Hama. In the quest for the treasure of stimuli. And of course we have funny characters like Boosh and Cheney of the Elephant Tribe and and uh Red Sarah and Hilaria from the Cult of Bill and I mean if you lived through 2008, it's just been retold as what if it was a DD campaign. Um Ow! Good. Serves you right for throwing dice. Um it's like, what if 2008 was a D&D campaign? That's really what this book is. Supposedly very funny, you know, this Barack warrior comes from Chicago. Uh, uh, uh. You can almost feel the rib in your, or the elbow in your ribs, you know, as you're reading it. Um, it's very cartoony art. I know it's funny, it, 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 it serves its purpose. It just kind of, you know, chucks, chucks a bunch of jokes. It's not remarkably leftist, as much as I expected it to be remarkably leftist. It is not a leftist piece. It's it's really funny. It kind of pokes fun at everything, and it it really, huh? Sick of seeing them. I don't like comic books. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, comic books are an incredibly left leaning industry, and and I'm kind of surprised that Larry Hama didn't take this chance to be really heavy handed about it. But you know, it's it is what it is. It's cartoony. It's Obama because Obama in a comic book apparently means that they're going to sell a hundred thousand copies no matter what. Even Youngblood had to go into multiple printings. Dear God. Um, and they're setting up for the Valley of the Pundits uh, next. But again, it's just going to be political satire. It's kind of funny, kind of cartoony. Is it worth three fifty? Probably not. <laughs> Instead, just go buy. X Factor, where dudes kiss other dudes. What? What? The Cleaners, number four of four, wrapped up, and holy crap, did this book take a turn that I I missed? I must have missed. I, I swear I read issue three. It's just been so long. Joshua Hale Fialkov did a great job in Elk's Run, and that's why I was reading this. I was like, hey, hey, Joshua Hale Fialkov's going to do a great job on the Cleaners, and I really didn't know where this book was going, and then all of a sudden, it's some sort of crazy, crazy ending that has nothing to do with, with the way this book started. So. I really, I don't feel like I can review this book. Maybe I completely missed something. I'm trying to find back issues and I, I, I think I sold them all actually because I said so many good things about the first couple issues because of how interesting they were. Talking about autoclaves and all of these very other, you know, medical techniques and then, and then all of a sudden I get in here and it's like some sort of crazy like vampire ending or something and I, I wasn't. have dudes kissing dudes. No, there are no dudes kissing dudes, but there are people bleeding out with leeches on them. And the leeches are put there specifically so they can bleed out more and more. And like every other panel is a shot of somebody bleeding out further. Like this, this one body, just more blood gushing out of it. Like, like it's almost like it's just there's so much volume of blood inside this one person's body. It's like it's like it's like a pocket dimension full of blood. So what you're saying is that there's an AIDS joke there somewhere. <laughs> there are no dudes kissing dudes in the cleaners, Tony. You'll be fine reading it. All right, back to. <laughs> Back to the DC here, Detective I, Comics. Speaking of... Chicks kissing chicks. <laughs> yeah, chicks kissing chicks. Dang. Whoa! <laughs> Detective Comics starts with the new direction. Greg Rucka and J.H. Williams III tell a Batwoman story where chicks kiss other chicks, and then the question where, where a chick wants to kiss other chicks but instead hangs out with a dude. Uh, <laughs> J.H. Williams' art is amazing. The layouts are, are awesome. It's really good stuff. Uh, Rucka's writing a very interesting first part, you know, it's, it's, it's what you can expect. You're not going to go in and go, oh, okay, I know exactly what's going on. Especially since the book has to be split between the two features. It, it's a start, it piques your interest, and the art really draws you in. That's, that's where Detective Comics is. And then, of course, the question does the same thing, you know, it's kind of like, like half of a first issue, you know. Here's this crazy adventure, and right when we get to the first possible moment of a cliffhanger, let's cut it. Bam! 
Bam! Kissing girls. The first five. No girls. The first. Aww. The first. Yeah. The first five. It's gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. The first five pages in particular, as you've probably seen, because it appeared in the others. I really like the way the titles were kind of cut. Like, like it was like a panel and then a title and then a panel and then a title. Remind me of like a movie opening, you know? Like, like you see a scene and then it go black and then they say, "Greg Rucka presents another scene, badass story about a lesbian." Another scene. Looking for the crime Bible. That's right. Looking for the crime Bible. <laughs> it's just like a movie, man. This is really good. I think this is really definitely uh, probably the best of the Batman Reborn titles so far. But not to be done, Bam! Paul Dini comes back with Gotham City Sirens. There are three chicks in here, but none of them kiss other chicks. Aww. I believe one of them actually kisses a dude, but the dude is the Riddler. Ugh. So anyways, uh, Paul, Dini, Paul Dini and Gillum March. And this is really interesting because I've seen Gillum March's art with Paul Dini before and it didn't look nearly as cartoony. So I'm thinking Jose Villarubia or whoever, whatever his name is that did the, they did the coloring here kind of had an influence on Gillum March. I'm not quite sure what happened, but it was really, really, it was really cartoony. It was, it was a, a mediocre story. Uh, it's probably one of the worst Paul Dini stories I've ever read, but I mean, even, even then, it's like really good. It's probably better than most of the things that are told. But uh, it just, I don't know. It's, it's interesting to see where we're going. It kind of sets up a, a, sets something up and then it goes, well, we're gonna set this up, but we're gonna twist it anyways. I was told that this was gonna be Charlie's Angels with uh, Riddler's Bosley, and that's totally not where it's going yet. Yet. <laughs> Paul Dini might get there, it's gonna take six issues, but, um, but you know, how much of it can you chalk up to Paul Dini and how much can you chalk up to DC editorial? It's really hard to say when you talk about DC Comics. Still a very solid first issue, very fun book. Harley Quinn and Catwoman and Poison Ivy palling around is always a fun book. It's always good. Lastly for this week, Superman number 689, Green Triangle number 31 for those of you playing the home game. James Robinson and Renato Guedes give us a kind of a story about Mon El here that's just kind of a filler. Just kind of floats in there. Uh, I know they're kind of killing time until they get to the next whatever one month crossover that's like a five or six part story kind of establishes him as he goes around the world and does all these various things and then sets up a very interesting plot twist with John Henry Irons. And then again, it's another solid issue, if not unspectacular. And it feels like they keep trying to do these big events and draw people in, but then they keep doing these little filler stories, which are still good, but really aren't delivering what they need to do. This book needs to decide what it's going to be about. Is it just going to be mon -El doing things in a holding pattern until Superman comes back? Or is it going to be mon -El actually getting invested in his own storylines and actually moving forward instead of just going, yep, he flew around the world and helped some people this, you know, in this issue. So let's see again where it goes, DC editorial direction. Ah, we love you. That's it for this week. As always, thanks for watching. Oh, and do watch for our special bittenbybooks.com review of Terror, Inc. Apocalypse soon coming this week. Thanks for watching.